is important. Um, in the morning uh, here at Genjoji, we have uh, Soji, and Soji is is a uh, is a temple cleaning. So um, uh, we all arrive at I think it's uh, eight forty-five, and uh, uh, somebody hits the han. The han is the wooden block uh, that uh, calls or invites uh, all spirits. Uh, and you wouldn't say working spirits. Yeah, you would say working spirits, like wholehearted, wholehearted working spirits, to come together, and we we um, we then uh, meet, and then somebody actually um, uh, tells uh, each person what to do. So uh, you clean the restroom, you, know, you take out the trash, you you sweep the the restroom building, and so we go and. Uh, uh, we do we do the cleaning and that's just that's all we do is we do the activity itself but a lot of times like just this week uh, I was cleaning the restroom building and I got carried away because um, I I thought it looked dirty to me <laughs> and so of course I kept on cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and then the Han the Han uh, the Han went off and um, I said, no, this is important and I'm going to keep on cleaning. <laughs> so I kept on cleaning. <laughs> and uh, I could hear the Han go off and then I, I finished and then uh, somebody somebody came down. They said, Nyoze, we were waiting for you. <laughs> you know, we we're waiting for you. Um, uh, so... Uh, so to clean something or to be in, in total activity is actually, it's to be in accord with, um, with all things. So it's the activity of, of all things and it's being, being accord, in accordance with all things. So the activity is important. Um, I, I think uh, when, we, when we first uh, come um, and study uh, Zen practice or Buddhism, it's very, it's very individual practice. So we probably come here, come to the Zen center because you want, you want to feel more, more at peace or you want to become more confident uh, or you want to become enlightened or you want to um, uh, uh, give yourself to some, you know, the universe, you know, offer yourself. So it's a little bit, um, uh, when we first come to study, you would say, to study the way it's very, it's very self-centered. And so we come with this self-centeredness and we try to, you know, I, I gave uh, instructions to um, Sonoma State University students yesterday and you know, you show you show how people you show them how to walk, and you show people how to you know put your palms together. And so we try we try our hardest then at the beginning to to you know to to put your palms together and do and do the right do it the right way the correct way. Um, but that's that's only a very um. Uh, it, it's it's on the very on the very surface of of what of what practice or activity uh, looks like. Um, uh, just like a, a just like a, a rock climber or runner, the runner buys uh, shoes and you know they start reading magazines and they talk to you know runners and and. Um, but it's it's uh, uh, the the more the more you practice and the more uh, you you investigate uh, this life this life as it is it, it starts to it starts to grow uh, uh, and and the self uh, the self starts to turn and to think about the world or or things around in which you affect or inspire or um, touch or connect with. 
So this individual, uh, this individual person that was studying the Buddha way starts to uh, study with other people, um, uh, starts to um, uh, see, see uh, not, the, not the depth of just Zen, but the depth of reality and the depth of one's life, it gets, it gets very deep and profound. And it's actually, it's um, limitless and it's unsurpassable and, it, and it's, it's boundless. This life is boundless. Um, so this individual practice, uh, uh, like the phrase is, is the, to study the Buddha way is to actually study the self. You know, so here, here we're actually studying the self which is not just this self, but it starts to be the self of, of all, of all things. You know, it's the self of all things, the self of this stick, the self of the glasses. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it starts to, uh, the activity of all things then, you 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 start to look you, your view your view starts to get big, um, and then of course, uh, what what Dogen writes in Gyoji is the let me see here. I'll read the the first paragraph of of Gyoji. So in the great way of the Buddhas and ancestors, there is always unsurpassable continuous practice, which is the way as a circle without interruption. So this uh, uh, Dogen always, uh, he, uh, Dogen's like uh, the founder of, of our Soto school and the great way um, he writes also like in the Fukasa Zangi, the, the way is an originally perfect and all pervading. So it's not, it's not just a way to follow. Um, it's not a way to look like, you know, a Zen person. It's not a way to be, um, but it's, it's an unsurpassable way in which cannot be, it cannot be surpassed. It could be met, but it's big and it, and it, and it has depth and everybody knows what that is, but, we cannot, you cannot say anything, or we cannot put words to it. Is the way, is as, as a circle without interruption, between the arousing of the awakened mind, practice, enlightenment, nirvana, there's no slightest break Continuous practice is the circle of the way. Therefore, this continuous practice is not activities that are forced to do by us or by others. It is the continuous practice that has never been defiled. The virtue of this continuous practice sustains ourselves and others. The essential point is that in the entire earth and throughout the heaven in the 10 directions, all beings receive the merit of our continuous practice. Although, neither, although neither others nor we ourselves know it, that is the way it is. Therefore, because of the Buddhas and ancestors, continuous practice, our continuous practice is actualized and our own great way is penetrated. Because of our own continuous practice, the continuous practice of all Buddhas is actualized and the great way of Buddhas is penetrated. Because of our own continuous practice, there is the virtue of the circle of the way. Because of this, each and every one of Buddhas and ancestors dwells as a Buddha, goes beyond Buddha, upholds Buddha, mind and completes Buddhahood without interruption. 
Because of the continuous practice, there are the sun, the moon, and stars. Because of the continuous practice, there is the great earth and the empty space. Because of the continuous practice, there is the self and its environment and body and mind. Because of the continuous practice, there are the four great elements and the five aggregates. Although the continuous practice is not something worldly people love, nevertheless, it is the true place to return for all people. Because of the continuous practice of all Buddhas in the past, present and future, all Buddhas in the past, present and future are actualized. Um, so so Gyoji, um, uh, Roshi read about, uh, about Bodhidharma um, coming, to, uh, coming to China and, and what he encountered and what Bodhidharma was doing. <clears throat> Um, Bodhidharma was was in the year of of 528 and um, Prajnatara who was his teacher in in China then gave him um, instructions gave uh, Bodhidharma instructions uh, to go from China uh, to go from India to, to spread uh, the teachings to China. So you would think um, that, that after being enlightened and his instructions from this great teacher, Prajnatara, that after uh, crossing the seas and, and climbing many mountains for several years, you would assume that when, as the story goes, if he arrives in China, you would, you would think that there would be many people many, many people to receive this, you would say the wondrous Dharma or this unsurpassable thing, you know, that's wordless. But when he arrived, there was no, there was no one there. And he, um, you know, to spread this great Dharma and, and, um, but that wasn't that wasn't the case. So he 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 went off into into a little corner of the universe, and and Bodhidharma went to the Shaolin Temple, and he 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 sat down. Bodhidharma sat down, and um, as as everybody knows, it was it was he sat in a cave, and. And no one, no one knew what he was doing. No one, no one didn't understand what he was doing. Um, but he kept on sitting, and he, he sat for for nine for nine years. And then, um, Taiso a guy. He, he came along and then joined Bodhidharma and um, and then and then he was by himself um, and it was a very it was a very a thin line that they they uh, transmitted and, and it went all the way down to um, uh, the sixth patriarch you know so it went to, down to Daikon Eno and it was it was 200 years after that Bodhidharma passed away that then, then during, um, uh, during the six patriarchs time, then, then Buddhism spread. And what is, what is very interesting is, is that, um, uh, he, uh, Bodhidharma, a Bodhidharma wasn't doing anything, and then no one, no one understood. So I, I think that's that's really a very interesting, interesting thing. No, no one understood.
Um, so going back to going back to our individual practice. Um, let's see. Therefore, because of the Buddhas and ancestors' continuous practice, our continuous practice is actualized, and our own great way is penetrated. Because of our own continuous practice, the continuous practice of all Buddhas is actualized, and the great way of Buddhas is penetrated. Because of our continuous practice, there is the virtue of the circle of the way. So when we sit down, when we sit down, um, uh, we, uh, we, we merge uh, through, through sitting silently, through sitting silently, we merge, we merge or something happens, something happens. But this, this something happens is, is the transmission or it's it's uh, receiving now. Now it's actually the lineage we're receiving. But that's if we if we sit sit down and we receive it. And so that's Bodhidharma when he was sitting, he wasn't sitting alone. <clears throat> but from the outside, from the outside, it looks like Bodhidharma was sitting was sitting alone. But but through this. Uh, through this, this, this sitting, some something happens. Something happens, and and one, uh, one or all things become. They become connected. Um, uh, so you could say this is Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, which is the the supreme the supreme enlightenment or waking up actually the to the moment right in front of you and and when 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 this happens then all all things cannot help but then then help and assist in this great enlightenment of all things so actually all the all the people who didn't understand they were they were enlightened just as much as bodhidharma was enlightened even though they weren't, they, no, there was no one around. And what does no one around, <laughs> no one around <laughs> mean? That's a very, very interesting thing. So the great way, which is the, the earth and the moon, stars and the sun, it's the universe that, that's something, that something happens when we are, when we are present for it. Um, so that this uh, this idea of of uh, of practice and conduct or or activity is is very interesting. Um, let's see. So I'll just read, I'll just read, uh, from this paragraph, uh, about Bodhidharma. <clears throat> the first patriarch in China came from the West to the Eastern lands at the instruction of Venerable Prajnatara. For the three years of frosts and springs during the ocean voyage, how could the wind and snow have been the only miseries? Through how many formations of clouds and sea mist might the steep waves have surged? He was going to an unknown country. Ordinary beings who value their body and life could never conceive of such a journey. This must have been 
maintenance of the practice realized solely from the great benevolent will to transmit the Dharma and save deluded emotional beings. It was so because the transmission of Dharma is Bodhidharma himself. It was so because the transmission of Dharma is the entire universe. It was so because the whole universe in 10 directions is the real state of truth. It was so because the whole universe in the 10 directions is Bodhidharma himself. And it was so because the whole universe in 10 directions is the whole universe in the 10 directions. What conditions surrounding this life are not a royal palace? And what royal palace is prevented from being a palace, a place to practice the truth? For these reasons, he came from the West like this. Because the saving of deluded emotional beings is Bodhidharma himself, he was without alarm and doubt, and he was not afraid. Because saving delud deluded emotional beings is the entire universe, he was not alarmed and doubt doubting, and he was without fear. Um, So, yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying to, so this, uh, this, this practice then um, of activity is going, going back to activity. Or actually maybe going back to, to Bodhidharma is, is what 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 is is Bodhidharma doing? So he he was doing he was he was he was realizing he was realizing um, uh, the supreme the supreme reality of life right in front of him. He was realizing it. He was making life real. And when you when when you sit zazen, and when um, when zazen becomes zazen, and there's no there's no thinking, and and you hold your posture up, there's no thinking. And zazen, when zazen does zazen, then there's an imprint, or there's this um, confirming the dharma in oneself, and it's bringing bringing all things close. So it's it's um, it's bringing all things close, and at the same time, then then it's it's emitting or transmitting. So again, this is now now this is the connection of receiving then the teachings from Shakyamuni Buddha, from Bodhidharma, from Ehe Dogen, from Shunyu Suzuki Roshi, and then that's why that's why we bow. These are all the teachings that that we do, but but it it's uh, it becomes it, the ancestor and all things then become part of you. That's when we are present and when we are actualizing and realizing uh, the one supreme reality in front of us, which is us, which is all things. Then that's that's when. The dharma, the dharma is boundless and it's unsurpassable. So it's not something then that we just do on the surface to to bow to bow to look like good Zen students, but it's something that's great and it's unsurpassable. That's what in the great way of the Buddhas and ancestors there is always unsurpassable continuous practice, which is the way as a circle without interruption. So aspiration, practicing, which is activity of our practice. It could be working, it could be cooking, it could be cleaning, it could be taking your kids to school, it could be eating at a restaurant, 
then this all starts to become actually the, the continuous practice of the way. So the way is so great that it's not just in this Zen box. It's, it's, un, it's the universe that's, that's the way. So Dogen's practice is actually the activity of everything. And it's returning to that place. When we, when we return to Zazen, then all things, or we return to that place, but that place is infinite and it's everywhere. In, the, in this pair of glasses, it's infinite within this. This place, infinite within this glasses. It's infinite within this stick. The particles, the neutrons, the, the atoms, we're returning to this place, which includes the place of all things, which is then infinite capacity. And when we return to this place, here, it is everywhere, but all the things then, they assist. They, they not only, not only is we think, oh, so when we sit, when we get enlightened, that means everything is enlightened. And that's still very selfish. But when, when there's no thinking and we're sitting or we're, when we're cooking, cleaning, and there's no thinking, then all things actually assist and, th and they, they cannot help but then give back. They give back. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a, maybe, maybe Rishi was talking about this uh, illuminating, illuminating the self and then uh, this, uh, this self, the, the I, the I uh, becomes, becomes very spacious. When the eye becomes very spacious and merges with all things, then there is there is no eye. It becomes this is one body now, and this is the the maybe the the joy, um, the the joy, or you you could say compassion, kindness, love. It's emerging. Then it's emerging with all things, merging with hate love, desire, greed, anger, ignorance, all the objects around you, it's merging with that. And you cannot, you cannot help but, but have, have um, a profound, um, not profound, uh, uh, just, just a love, love for all things. But this, this comes up, this comes up uh, simultaneously. And then the, the love, of all things or the connection of all things, the enlightened being of all things then mirrors back and it cannot help but then it, it exponentiates. So it's, it's therefore then everything is enlightened because of that camera, because of your sh shawl or because of the watch. So everything is enlightened and that's actually Buddha's activity. It's the activity of all things. So it's not us that's doing it. <laughs> yes, we are doing it. Then you say, yes, we are doing it as individuals. But then, no, we're not. And that, that's, that's quite, uh, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. So Bodhidharma sitting in a cave by himself, what was he doing there? It's very interesting. What was he doing? So when we sit and when we practice wholeheartedly we are finding out and we are being uh, we are being all things we're being Bodhidharma we're receiving all the transmission from the, the Buddha so it, it's it's quite quite amazing so the Buddhas and ancestors in the great way of the Buddhas and ancestors then we are the Buddha <laughs> then we become the ancestors and we are the Buddha and actually without our practice then there is no bodhidharma. So it's 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 uh, and so right now we are actually doing bodhidharma's practice in the in the cave. Right now we are doing bodhidharma's practice, and he lived in five hundred and twenty eight. So it's it's uh, uh, it's it's quite quite amazing that way. Um,
let me read. Um, yeah, it's it's just the the and and then the 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 longer the longer one one practices, then at the same time, then the self the self uh, starts to practice in a different way because you're practicing also in this in this uh, lineage of a lineage of you would say a Soto Zen, which has been handed down from us from the Buddha. Um, or you're you're practicing in a way it's it's actually um, practicing all things so it's it's the self starts to not think about you know just to do it because I want to become confident or <laughs> so it, it's interesting as as you go on this path then this self uh, in reality starts to uh, dissolve dissolve itself. Um, uh, in 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 real time, yeah, I don't know in real time or in your life as as you live your life, then the, the self starts to dissolve that way. Um, but does that have something to do with that we uh, come to realize the interconnectedness of everything? Yeah. So therefore, that the selfish practice. Have to fall away, or the self-centered practice has to fall away. Yeah, it so could, the whole thing, yeah. the continuous practice, is true. It's, it's, it's incredible because at the, each uh, minute second, you you uh, you uh, you plunge into you know that, that co uh, connectedness. Yeah. Um, and so that no beginning, no end, uh, it's, uh, you actually have an experience of that in that uh, very minute uh, second. Yeah. Right? Like we think of often as a linear thing. Yeah. Right? But that the whole thing about the continuous yeah, yeah. Uh, circle, there's no... Yeah, no the circle without end. interruption. That's how we can actually sit the Bodhidharma or all, all the... the all, all beings, not just teachers uh, or people that have been uh, practicing uh, before us. Yeah, the right? circle. The circle is, is like you were saying, it's infinite. Like uh, the circle of the way, you you have it, and it says right here, right. It's uh, between the arousing of awakening mind, practice, or activity, enlightenment and nirvana. There's no slightest break. It's all, it's all, it's all together. Um, let, let me read from here. When one displays the Buddha mudra with one's whole body and mind sitting upright in this samadhi even for a short time, Everything in the entire Dharma world becomes Buddha Mudra, and all space in the universe completely becomes enlightenment. Therefore, it enables Buddha Tathagatas to increase the Dharma joy of their own original grounds and renew the adornment of the way of awakening. Simultaneously, all, all living beings of the Dharma world in the ten directions and six realms become clear and pure in body and mind, realize great emancipation and their own original face appears. At that time, all things together awaken to supreme enlightenment and utilize Buddha body immediately go beyond the culmination of awakening and sit upright under the kingly Bodhi tree. So that means everything now is sitting upright under this Bodhi tree of enlightenment. 
It's just crazy. <laughs> but that that's when we do it. Like we do it, but we is big. At this at the same time, they turn the incomparable great Dharma wheel and begin expressing ultimate and unfabricated profound prajna. It's a reality of life, the great reality of life. There is a path through which the Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, incomparable awareness of all things returns to the person in Zazen. And whereby that person and the enlightenment of all things intimately and imperceptively assist each other. So it's now, it's this merging. Therefore, this Zazen person without fail drops off body and mind, cuts away previous tainted views and thoughts, awakens genuine, awakens, awakens genuine Buddha Dharma, universally helps the Buddha work in each place. So it's like in like there, there's a there's a working then in each place, but that each place is infinitely small, like all the particles in the air. Everything, everything, just everything is solid, infinitely working now. It's not just me and then you, Coco, or it's not just that camera, but everything even in between. So it's it's all things now. As numerous as atoms, where Buddha Tathagatas teach and practice and widely influences practitioners who are going beyond Buddha, vigorously exalting the Dharma which goes beyond Buddha. At this time, because earth, grasses and trees, fences and walls, tiles and pebbles, all things in the ten direction, Dharma realm carry out Buddha work. Therefore, everyone receives the benefit of wind and water caused by this functioning. So boy, this is great and it's big and all imperceptively helped by wondrous and incomprehensible, com incomprehensible influence of Buddha to actualize the enlightenment at hand. Since those who receive and use this, this water and fire extend the Buddha influence of original enlightenment, all who live and talk with these people also share and universally unfold the boundless Buddha virtue. And they circulate the inexhaustible, ceaseless, incomprehensible, and immeasurable Buddha Dharma within and without the whole Dharma world. If only one person sits for a short time, because this zazen is one with all existence and completely permeates all time, it performs everlasting Buddha guidance within the inexhaustible Dharma world in the past, present, and future. Zazen is equally the same practice and same enlightenment for both the person sitting and all dharmas. You should know that even if all the Buddhas in the 10 directions, as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, together engage the full power of their Buddha wisdom, they could never reach the limit or measure or comprehend the <clears throat> virtue of one person's zazen. So boy, you know, me reflecting, you know, when, when Roshi was reading, like what, what was Buddha, what was Bodhidharma doing alone in that cave, boy. Uh, 
and little did we know and little did all the other people know in all things around Bodhidharma that it was just incomprehensible. But then now, now we're sitting zazen, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Thank you.